can breathe at the Mount of Top Everest. Mount of Top Everest? No, you can't. You can breathe Mount at a higher Everest. altitude than Mount Everest. Mount Everest. No, you cannot. Not yes, without an oxygen, can. you can't. Yes, no, you, you can. cannot. You wanna bet? No, you cannot. Wanna bet me? Wanna bet? Yes, I do want to bet. Why? Why do you think wanna they go up me? to the top yes, of Mount yes, Everest? Yes, you why yes. do you, you think? Yes. Why do you think, Kimo? Much, they go to the top of Mount Everest. How much? Why be quiet? I'm going to mute you. How much you want to bet me? How much you want to bet? Yes, I'll, I'll fucking whatever you want. Five hundred pounds. Fine, 500 quid, it is. Done, right, okay, fine. Look at the videos of the people that have actually gone up to Mount Everest. They're all carrying oxygen. You now owe me 500 quid, dumbass. Right, so what about the people that can fly at 40,000 feet without any oxygen mass? Because right, they're in a pressurised cabin in an aircraft. Not in the Fuck cabin. Sake. They're in the wheel hub. No, 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 they're fucking the not. You owe me 500 quid. No, you owe me 500 quid. I said you can go higher than Mount Everest and breathe. No, you um, can't. Can yes, you can. can. Moya, be quiet. Yes, pumping. you can. can we pause no, you really can't. Quick? Hold on a minute. You owe me five hundred pounds. As always, you're talking at I your feet. Five hundred quid. I would argue. Oh, Hold you on. owe me five hundred quid, dumbass. Hey, man. Well, we'll find Matt? out. I said you can agree. Well, yeah, we will we'll find out. Outside. You know the truth. You know exactly. Do you've been caught out? You've been caught out. It's not going to end. It's not going to end. Five hundred quid. What's your name? Matt. Kimo. Matt B. You owe me five hundred pounds. Plenty of evidence. There's plenty Should of evidence that people climbing around the way where they're like having to use oxygen because they cannot survive Should without it. Yeah, can you wait for a second, please? I got one thing to say to you. Sherpa Tensing yeah. did not have an oxygen bottle. Okay. Okay, He's lost. Let me, He's lost. Let me, We're not going to forget this, Leo. He owes me yeah. 500 pounds. He did not need the oxygen bottle. Some point yes. 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 Everyone here heard it. You said yes. an oxygen bottle. You're, you heard that. You know he owes me 500 quid now because you already know the point. Yes. You know he owes me 500 quid. Yes. I don't owe you shit all. Fuck all. on a bed. You're a sneaky, low-down grifter, aren't you? Wrong, 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 wrong. Matt, I want to agree with Chemo that you can breathe on the top of Mount Everest, but it's amount, the amount of time that you could breathe up there. Yeah, yeah but you heard him say you can go even higher without oxygen. without oxygen. You heard him say it. You can go even higher without, you can breathe normally without oxygen. You all heard him say it. All right. Hours and hours. Hours and hours. I'd Not like to me. jump in with uh, one thing here because Kimo's playing a game. He's talking about a guy in a wheel well on an airplane. There's several guys who survived in a wheel well on an airplane. Surviving is not exactly functioning. You need to, oxygen to function. You need exactly. higher oxygen to function. Well, so, they, well, they, they survived hours without an oxygen mask. They didn't die. Survive. The point is they didn't die. You said you can't survive going higher than Everest without an oxygen mask. That's a lie. That's false. And we have the it's evidence. Not fucking lie. It's not a fucking lie. You can some point or another, you have need fucking oxygen, uh, chemo. That's utter nonsense. Gibberish. We've got, we've got the evidence. So, <laughs> what the evidence of what? Survive for how long? You are going to go to Over hypoxia. 10 hours, you know, Phil. Over it's 10 hours. Hypoxia. You are not going to get enough oxygen in your system. 10 Therefore, hour you are flight, going to Phil. Oxygen. That's no what oxygen. I said. So they can survive 10 hours, right? But they couldn't live their lives up Moyet there. knows about this, and that's why I had to Absolutely stop him. Absolutely gibberish. From, uh, I'll expect you to sell 500 quid. It right? doesn't yeah. matter, because the, the, point, the point Chris is trying to make is that the air gets thinner as you go up, and it's obviously true. That's it's objectively model. true. No, it's a, you can measure it. No, that's the model. Reality no, shows, so reality shows, 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 shows 35,000 feet there is without no, oxygen. There is no model despite. about it. It's observable, uh, look, Matt's objective, right away. fact. 100% fact that the air gets, the yeah. oxygen level no, gets mass. lower hey, as of, you get higher. Just top of Everest, Brian. Yes. It's objective truth yeah. and fact yeah. that yeah, 100% Oxygen yeah, levels drop. You should have said a thousand oxygen. quid, really, but that would have been probably too much for him to pay. But five hundred, I thought he might be able to pay. So he owes me five hundred smackers. I, I would like to, Kimo. I would like to state here. Yes, you can build a model off that claim, but the it is objectable. I mean, object, objective fact, one hundred percent that at at my altitude. And compared to Mount Everest, 
the amount of oxygen decreases as you increase in altitude. And yes, you can bear, you can, um, I almost said bearded devil, but no, you can build a model of the planet off of that. That's true. But I'm not talking about building a model. I'm just talking about objective, observable, 100% fat. That was a quick 500. We make so much money uh, this way. Uh, I'm owed thousands. I've got Cypher thinking he can travel the world using Moss with the North going north or something. He lost way, that. way to change the subject. I'm just saying though, you guys are big books. You've got Pure owes me 4,000 for, I can't remember what it was for, but it was... And then now we've got the man here, 500 pounds, um, and he's run away. What? By the way, Chemo, Chemo, I'll bet you 500 quid right now that anybody in this room the one. will agree with my statement, no matter what the shape of the earth is, that oxygen decreases as you get higher in altitude. I'll bet you 500 quid that no matter what the shape of the earth is, that is objective 100% true. It could be flat. It could be a circle. It could be a sphere. It could be a triangle. It could be a dodecahedron. And the same thing would hold true. Only thing I don't like about what you said there is oxygen. Oxygen relative ratio stays the same, but so it gets a little vague. Pressure drops, and therefore available oxygen drops. So you're right, but we're talking with pedantic assholes. Right, but the shape of the Earth has nothing to do with it. Although you could probably build a shape of the Earth based off of it, but that's not my point. You know, Kimo, uh, with that ill-advised $500 bet, yeah. I think this, you know, a, couple, a couple of words need to be added to that. Cannot function normally. No, no, he said, he said you cannot survive above Everest without an oxygen. Well, then, then he might not be entirely wrong because survive, I think, implies a, a duration. And I don't know what that duration is, but you cannot live at 35,000 feet. You will die. You can survive. You can you, you can survive a period. I can survive not breathing for two minutes. Just cold. That's all. Very, well, very that's cold. that's horse shit. But if you wrap up nice, fine. Look, See, now that's, that's one of these things where, like, chemo. If I take a bottle, a, a, my Pepsi bottle that I drank to, as I got to the top of Mount Everest, and I drink it all, and I put the cap on it, and I go back down to the bottom of the mountain where it's hotter. It's much colder at the top of Mount Everest. And when I get down to the bottom of Mount Everest, even though that air inside that bottle has been heating up, that bottle has been slowly compressing in my pocket until it reaches looking like it was in a fucking vacuum chamber. Give uh, Mabet 100. Bro, Gemma, Thank you. Get 100. What's left? Thank What's you. left? So what do you think, Timo, about that? If left? you went up there and it was cold? 300, guys. How many, how many dollars do we have left? Hey, Kimo? You've got my PayPal. Just stick it in there, mate. Yeah. So, Kimo, what, happ what happens to that bottle that I opened up at the top of Mount Everest and I come down? Uh, at Everest, uh, in your model, um, the bottle... No, no, in reality, the guy who goes up there and has a sealed bottle that he sealed at the top of the mountain, and he closes that bottle and he comes down the mountain. Now, the air in that bottle was cold. It's going to heat up the whole time it goes down the mountain, and yet the bottle will compress and will be squished. Why will the bottle be squished by the time I get to the bottom? It should be, you know, if your theory is right that it's just cold, then that bottle no, should no, expand. No, 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 no. If you take uh, your... Real, real quick, in that picture, um, you, you said pay up, no mask. Um, by the way, there's an oxygen bottle with a mask right at his feet. I circled it in red and put mask, dumbass. Go oh. take a look at it and retract your statement that anybody... Pays up anything, You're you a fucking bit late to the party, people. We're not just talking about the mountain. It was taken on, off during on. a photo opportunity. Does not mean that it is not used or not required while at that altitude. And this is where I eviscerate you now, pure. This is not where you eviscerate. You said he Mavit put in there explicitly. Well, no, even though the oxygen bottle 
people with a fucking mask sitting at the guy's feet. I circled it in you red. said that pure two or three times now. And yeah. it's time for me to eviscerate your thinking pattern. So I want no, to talk... is, is, there, is there an oxygen bottle at the man's feet? I wasn't talking about yes, sir. yes or no. Yes or no. It's circled in red. It is just yours. so you You're can. Right. You're right. You're right. Oh, oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, I eviscerated you. Thank you for admitting that. Yes. So now I'm going to annihilate you. Okay. So, yes, Matt was talking about Everest. I was referring to the flights that are at 35 to 40,000 feet. Now, we know there are stowaways that hide in the wheel well, okay, and fly for up to 10 hours. 10 hours, right? They're not just one person. They had brothers. Uh, one in one wheel, another in another wheel. Okay, one survived, one didn't because he was crushed. I like the plane. What? But the point is, is that there are many people, survivors, who have survived altitude, but you say they would die. You yes. said you said that many. I mean, there's there's one. Many, no, there's, many. There's, there's oh my goodness, like Leo, There are many, 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 many. Dude, how much is many? More than ten. <laughs> no, there's not any explanation. So more than ten of people who traveled in the wheel. Wheel um, hole. Yeah. Wheel so, hub so, of a plane. So what okay. Well, 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 so what if you go to a, I'm, familiar, you go to a, I'm familiar with the story well, of, the, of the brother. Shut the fuck up, Chemo. Oh. Because, one, they know how the one man survived because there was enough oxygen circulating through the system, the pressurized system that the gentleman uh, Matt was talking about earlier that gave him enough oxygen for his brain to survive. He passed out and was in the hospital for a very long time while recuperating. That's the only way the motherfucker survived. They didn't land and then hop out like nothing was wrong. The gentleman was taken to the hospital and in intensive care for a while. There was just enough circulating guy. through the system that was leaking into the wheel well system. Poor guy. Uh, I, I can't remember his name, but I, I remember the story. And how did was, what year was, it, was that? Was, what year was that one? What year was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, you tell me. Oh, you tell me. Many different stories. I told, well, you, I, told you, I told you there are numerous cases. Numerous. No, no, there's not. There's actually so what very. What year few. was the one you're talking about? Then what year was it? I think it was two thousand one. Two thousand and one. Not 1966. Not 1966. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there was one or two or ten. The thing is, it's not done daily, and the explanation behind well, it. Yeah, people get caught. Well, That's why it's not done daily. System, it was a pressurized system so look, that circulated. Here. I'm going to go through them just to debunk your. Okay, we've got 1966. 17 male survived 34,000 feet. First one. Okay. Her, survive. Let's take a look at another one. Okay. We have a 19... I'm just going back in the past. 1960. Um, survived. Australia... The first, yeah, right, the first person to try was 1946. Um, Australian. And they survived. We'll so so is it everybody who's done this survived or not everyone no no died? there were some fatal cases of course because they got crushed oh, oh, by the wheel it. or they got they froze like it says here 1966 um this guy died froze does yeah. the cold uh, reduce the need for oxygen again 19 so listen 1969 uh, who Two tried to escape. One died. One survived. See? Mm. So here's another case. So when Pure tells his nonsense about what... I've just given you three cases so far versus Pure's 2001 case, right? We're not even near 2001 yet, okay? So we have another one. 1986. 19, 1986. 
What altitude was the 1946 one? No, 1986. Didn't tell you. 1980. This one does. Oh. This one does. This one does. No, this one, one does. This one does. 1986. 39,000 feet, boys and girls. Bang. Oh, really in man. your face. Another, another story. Right? Survive. 39,000 feet. Boeing 707. In your face. Here's another one. Five hour flight. <laughs> All right, hold on. Right. Hold on. You're going too fast here. The DC another one. one. Five, this is 1990. Hold on, Kimo. Kimo, where you're taking these Hold on, Survived. Fuck? Bang. Shut In up. your face. Two. Kimo, shut up okay. for fuck's sake. Okay. Kimo, the 9th, July 26th, the male 17, the second unknown, uh, was in a DC 8. What height was that? I don't. I just said I don't know. It doesn't say. And how are you adding that to your list of people? Because they were in. They were at high altitude and they survived. Now two men here from yeah. Trinidad. Five hour flight. That's not. You can't use that one. You've only got one so far. I don't know. Um, another one. Thirty-five thousand. Unless it's a maybe. Okay. Good. Right. Right. Here's another one. Here's another one. Right with this height. Right. So here we go again. Now check this out. What is the uh, the issue with this one? This is nineteen ninety three. Survived, but frosted. Frosted. That was all that was wrong. Frosted. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. so you're just pulling off. this off the Wikipedia page, aren't you? Books. Yes. Yeah. He's just he's just pulling this off the list of wheel well stowaway flights. Uh, on duh. Wikipedia. Obviously, I'm showing a fill here. How many died and survived, and ha at what height for Mike? 1998, Mike. 33,000 feet higher than Everest, right? All right, now let's let's take this one more question, uh, which I do have to ask you. Um, higher in, than Everest. Does Look human meta, does, uh, add in hypothermic conditions, Look, is there, a, it, is there it, evidence it, that human beings... Fucking talk. Chemo, is there evidence that human beings can survive protracted times without any oxygen uh, when they're hypothermic? No, look, like, like kids you fall from the bottom of a lake this. and stuff. You yeah. told me that they would die above Everest. And I'll right, show right. you there, now. There are mitigating circumstances that you have oh. to take into account, aren't there? Yeah, whatever. I, you all said you would die. Whatever. We can see that you don't die, right? We can see that at 38,000 feet. In, in, some, in some cases, so dumb. You, you picked between, two, uh, what was it, between 1985 and 2012, there's been 65 cases of stowaways. Uh, more often than not, uh, there were 65 of them that were found fucking dead. So of those 80-something cases, wow, 20 of them survived. According to your, your one a minute ago, that's a big change, Pure, from one person in 2001 to 20. That's a bit of a big uh, jump. I said I know, I know of one that you were talking about that was two brothers. And I know one, the one that well, passed you know away, and, one, and the one that survived you know were the FAA. More. The FAA, you fucking cunts, were, investigated it, found that there was a there was enough circulating oxygen from the the uh, uh, the the oxygen system to for the gentleman to have survived. Okay. I I do know that case yeah. per, pretty well. well. I don't need to know right. his name. I don't need to know his age. I don't need to know. Uh, any of that shit, I know enough of it that of uh, the reason why he survived, there was enough oxygen to preserve his brain. Say one more while time, he, you might believe it. I'm not going to argue that point. It's just ridiculous. This is all irrelevant. You, you, you just did. You did because ridiculous you used. So, Mike, you, here's another you, one for you. you. 2000, you okay? Said, we haven't reached 2000. Now, I need the right? other mitigating circumstances, dude. The Moyak, here's oh, 38,000 oh, feet. You, you, sat there, you sat there after I told you this information and said you were going to eviscerate me, and you just Googled quickly surviving fucking stowaway cases, but it didn't eviscerate anything. You avoided it, and now you're saying you're not going to argue the specific points that was initially your fucking evidence. Okay, so listen then. If. Those people survive. So where, where are you, you, when are you going question? to address you what I said in that derail off? So you said that I, those survivors I, 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 survived. You know, you just got wrecked, son. You just said those survivors survived because of oxygen. Yeah? One. One enough circulating, because, because no, circulating oxygen. oxygen. Mm -hmm. And to the uh, cargo bay and wheelwell area that allowed him to survive. Yes, why, enough. Why did the others die? The other dying? 
other people die. You said there's a high cases of deaths with no oxygen. Why didn't the oxygen circulate the yes, same so way? From, 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 eight, from, 80, from 85 to about 2012, where, there's where been about 85 cases. 60, 65, 65 of those have been found dead. Yeah, where was for the various reasons? Where was the oxygen? The pr the pressurized system that it would create. No, he's asking with the people who died. Where was the oxygen? Where was the oxygen? For the where was the died? oxygen? Yeah, going through Some the going well, through the system. Know. What pure? Going through the system to the actual passengers. No, the people that died pure. Where was the oxygen? There wasn't enough. Uh, hold on, boy. Stop saving him. The pure. Nobody's the people, saving me. The people that died through lack of oxygen. There, there was. There, hold, uh, did I say they all died of lack lack of oxygen? Or did I say what did they various die of? Re various reasons. There various reasons. But some did people actually die because of lack of oxygen. Uh, some of them, yeah. How? But the oxygen is coming out. You said. No, in that one case, they they found the FAA found in that plane there was enough circulating oxygen that made it down to the cargo bay and the wheel well area. That yeah. uh, allowed the person week. to survive. Yeah. But all the others died. No oxygen came through. Yeah, if the system doesn't have a leak, uh -huh. or there's not, there's nothing going down to the cargo bay. Yeah. Could so that one on plane, yeah. that yeah, one it, plane it, had a leak of oxygen, but the rest of them had no leak of oxygen. Does everyone have In the same cases, tolerance yeah. for oxygen deprivation? No. No, I mean, look of at Vin not. Hoffman. Vin Hoffman can go to the top of Mount Everest. No, he can't. Without, he, he, without no, he did any not. No, he did not. No, he did not. He he went to one of the uh, various summits on the way up to the actual top summit. He never he never went up. He only went. Uh, what was it? A few thousand feet. Base camp, I think. Yeah. I don't understand what the argument. If these the, people the, didn't die, the the, ar the argument is you just fucking lied. Uh, Hoffman did not go up to the summit. He only went up a, a portion of the way, couple. which is only a few thousand feet. Couple of things also, this, here. This Wim whole Hall. thing is stupid. Wim Hof. That's his yeah, name. Yeah, whatever. Wim Hof. Whatever. Secondly, he went to 23,000-ish feet. Thirdly, the death zone, as they call it, begins at 26,000 feet. Have a good day, Kimo. Well, Sit down. Like you, that doesn't matter. Thank you, Kurt. I appreciate that it. No, 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 actually, that does matter. That does matter because you just said he went to the summit of Mount Everest. It doesn't matter. We've had people go higher than that. Um, no, no it, it does matter. You use this as an example where Curb, knowing more information, and I appreciate his correction, uh, wrecked the fuck out of you, son. It matters not. We've had people go higher than that. Is every, uh, the, so the question still remains: Is is everyone's tolerance uh, for oxygen deprivation the exact same? Uh, no, of course not. Oh, okay. So some people probably can uh, go uh, higher, hello, with, you know, with, within within, within within with intensive training. Yeah, but you the, you seem to think because one or two people survived higher elevations, therefore everyone. You said at least 20. The point is that when the, the you know, we're just, the, the bet was malformed to begin with because it was not very specific. Point is, you said yeah. you would die at 29,000 uh, mo mo Most you people, very yeah, mo most people. You might. Chemo. Only because die. it's cold. I don't know. Not because you can't no, no, no one ever, no one ever said everyone will die. The, the, the very broad statement was, you, yeah, you will die uh, if you go at elevations without, no the support, you cannot breathe without, breathe without those heights. Without the support, nobody said you can't breathe, but you more, more often than not, you will die. There's no evidence there's set, that you seven, cannot breathe at those heights. It depends on what you're doing. If you're just sitting up there, you might be fine, right? But if you're trekking and you're you're climbing a mountain then yeah you're gonna need oxygen to fucking go like it, it no all depends on so many no factors. evidence of that he, whatsoever yeah, yes sir it is motherfucker have oh, ever, ever, ever. Ever. no a lot, you know, a lot of people, people a lot of people hey, hey chemo a lot of people even down at places near sea level just a few hundred feet start exerting like running 
You're not going to say and ham trouble pounds. and have trouble, dude. You are the rudest motherfucker ever, and have trouble breathing while exerting, uh, you know, energy. You're just simply running, like running a, a mile, like in high school. Not everybody has the same tolerance, you know, uh, uh, of oxygen deprivation. Wrong with Some you. people who have trained. This has been my argument. Your so argument, argument is, is that the cold causes argument. this. Now that you're now arguing your... my point. The whole point that you no. made is that it's cold that causes them to die. And that is a mm -hmm. false statement. No, because there are people what, who live... Shut they... up! There are people who live in Minnesota and spend months in temperatures that are akin to Mount Everest. <laughs> there are I'm people who go to Antarctica the no point and live this. quite handily Cold hypothermia is quite different than oxygen deprivation. Yep. Okay. Uh, you haven't got any facts or figures. I've got the uh, Wikipedia. Yes, no, you don't. You don't have a fucking thing other than your word. At what temperature can hypothermia start to you set lied. in, Chemo? You lied. What can, what, no, I didn't. You, you, you lied. What, what temperature? One person. What person? No one ever said there was just one you person. Did. I said, no, I didn't. I had to go and get more. He said he knew of one. There's no, a difference. He, he didn't say there's person. only one. He said he knew of one. Not what he said. His yep. knowledge does not have to include all cases. He was informing you of a single exception. Now stop lying. Well, again, we've got the facts. <laughs> Oh, you, you, you got you got wrecked. You don't have a fucking fact ever. At what temperature, chemo, can hypothermia start to set in? Uh, and I'll what are the factors I'll have to, that I'll have would to do Google, it? Google, Google that. Oh, you don't. Oh, so you don't have the facts, the figures. You don't know. You just say hypothermia without it even knowing. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't say uh, I knew what uh, the temperature was. Off my well, do you have the facts. You have the you. But you said you have the facts and the figures and, about and the, the knowledge. Air, whether you can breathe or not. No, you don't. Don't care. And you can breathe just fine at forty thousand feet. No. Even higher. No, you can't. You're not you, just you, you, fine. Found, you found a few. You found a few outliers. Surviving right. is not just fine. All the people don't that lie. died right. did not don't die lie. because they couldn't breathe. They died because they froze or <laughs> fell or got crushed by the wheel. Uh, no. That is not the only reason. That no, those reason. From those Some things, it just says they survived, breathe. Kimo. You can't really claim anything from just <laughs> those things. It just says they survived. No, no, it says in the article, Phil, I'm reading it. So the first one Yeah, here, it, it said they, 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 uh, they survived. Died, doesn't give a reason. Next one died, froze. Next one fell out before takeoff. Next one, one fell to death. Second fell oh, so death, one survived. <coughs> Bow to his death survived. After, after, okay. after the landing gear opened underneath him as the gear retracted. Survived does not mean that you made it unscathed, so what, un the unharmed. Because the landing gear lowered. So the hey, next hey, one hey, Kimo. fell. Hey, Kemo. 50 Cent survived being shot seven times. Yes, but I'm that saying the reason why he died is because they oh, no, 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 no. Shut, the fu shut your fucking cock holster. 50 Cent was shot seven times in one incident. He survived it. That doesn't mean he didn't go to the hospital. It didn't mean that he, he didn't spend 10 days, uh, roughly 10 days, uh, in ICU having a breathing tube down his fucking throat, breathing for him. Surviving doesn't mean you were not harmed or injured in any way, shape, or form. No, no, so to pretend... So to, mm, you said survive just fine. You can breathe just fine. No, I'm talking about ones yeah. that died. They died because... Of being frozen, or they fell, or they were crushed the other, by the wheel. Those are not the only mitigating factors. Those are all, some of them because people climb up in the wheel well and it's very tight. Find me one way it says they Why do you guys keep fighting over the same thing? Because I debunked them. Forty-nine thousand feet or forty-three thousand feet, Kimo. There's not enough oxygen. Hannah, Stupid. They're upset with the fact Stupid that I argument. Their model once again. It's not it their best model. It's the fact that there's no oxygen up there. Uh, so how can not people enough, breathe anyway. up there then? Most people cannot. Find uh, one outlier. Most people you can. Think you think that that's the case? Have you tried it? I'm not stupid.
Exactly. I've and tried up to 14,000 feet can't. and I found it, it was very difficult to breathe at 14,000 feet. Most people feet. can. Whether I was indoor in climate control no. or outdoor. Most people right. cannot. Have you, have you tried it? Have you tried it? I would try it within a heartbeat. No, no, have you? you Nothing have you about. tried We've it? seen all kinds of people survive. Have you tried it? Have you done it, Kimo? No, I said I would try Have you gone up a mountain? Oh, right. What's so the you, highest so elevation you've been it. to? Kimo, what's the highest elevation you've been to? Um, it's not about me. I've been, I've been up a mountain. Oh, it is about you. you. Oh, it is about you because you're making this whole thing about you. I don't know. It's not about me. It's you just said you could survive. Just fine, and I'm asking oh, you. Oh wow, yeah. What yeah, is yeah, the yeah, highest yeah. altitude you've been to? If I was there, uh, wrapped up warm, and I wouldn't get crushed by the wheel. What is the highest altitude you've been to? Not what ifs. I mean, again, this is a fact. What is the highest? Difficult altitude? to say. Difficult. I've been to fourteen thousand. I would and like to when say. I got there. I found breathing labored. That's for many yeah. hours. Yep. Not being rude. About a day you know. and a half. It's labored breathing. You're not exactly yeah, I'm, a chip I, I, I've been I've been over twelve and it's still fucking pretty labored. I've oh my god actually it's done so physical dumb, chemo. Well, but I, uh, like that, I've, but your I've been falling apart. I've been you can measure the O2 at those levels and, and we know. Yeah, I, it's I, not I even a question. Easily found out, easily known. Well, it's again, good. if you want to believe that, that's entirely up to you. But there's no force to make the pressure anyway. No reason why you wouldn't be able to breathe with there anyway, unless it was just cold. That'd be the only reason why it would stop you from. Uh, Operating on that. The pressure would increase if it was just cold, Kima. Come on, yeah, yeah, don't be yeah, dumb. Sure, it would. That's why his blood was boiling, right? In that low pressure zone. All the people there, yeah, the blood were boiling. Cold yeah. and pressure are two different things. Yeah, I'm saying they are in a low pressure re and somehow their blood is not boiling. Okie dokie. Why is the pressure lower when the temperature is lower? What? Why is the pressure lower when the temperature is lower? Well, exactly. You've got low pressure, low temperature, and you, high pressure, high temperature. And then I guess you don't know how gases work, because lower temperature, right, means higher pressure. Lower yeah, why, do they, why do they seem to be not related? Lower temperature, higher pressure. You want to say that again, Phil? Yeah. Depends yeah, yeah. well. Lower yeah. temperature... Well, what did you say? Lower... Lower again. temperature means higher density, right? Higher pressure. You say lower temperature means higher pressure. Lower... Okay, let me, let me, let me restate it. Lower yeah, temperature means higher density, that, right? Lower temperature means higher density, right? Mm, lower, say, lower... Say again now, you're revising it. Lower temperature means higher density, right? Colder air sinks. Lower... Uh, density. But again, but that's that's because now you're not going to have a higher pressure because there's no container for it to press on. But that's Kimo. why it doesn't work outside. That can only work in a container. Pressure. Kimo, look at the chat. I'm not looking at your diagrams that are mathematically proposed. I can see it. But that's not mathematical presuppos presupposition. That's measurements <laughs> taken Phil, from weather. Measurements, that's Kimo, measurements Jesus. taken from weather balloons. If you've got uh, mattresses are piled on top of one another. You're going to have the highest pressure at the bottom and the highest temperature at the bottom. Yeah, see how that doesn't quite match what you're saying. So there won't be the highest pressure at the bottom and the highest temperature. You lie underneath all of those. And then pressure, see yes. See how those measurements no. don't exactly match what if you're you saying. If you lie on the ground, you put mattress on top of you. What well, with mattresses don't act like air? atmosphere no no i'm saying that if you apply more pressure the temperature would increase and phil just said it the other way around yeah will you take a look and see how that doesn't match what we've measured in our atmosphere what you think there is high pressure, yeah, that temperature seems temp to go down and then back up again and then down again but be clear High pressure, you think there is high pressure, low temperature. That's not no, what I'm well, saying. No, not necessarily true. That's what you just said. That's well, certainly not well, what I'm I miss, saying. Well, I misspoke. I meant to say right. density. You see? 
And that's my point. So, you know, we're listening very clearly, Phil, to what's being said here. Um, <laughs> well, you <laughs> don't Jesus, you know, you never listen. Now, you're lucky I didn't bet you on that and ask you to clarify and clear it up. Well, like you still owe me 500 quid, so... I understand you're after the truth. But, Matt, you owe me 500 pounds. <laughs> no, you owe me 500 quid, sunshine. Um, you know, pun artist. Lost 500 pounds, I can't accept it. No, that's okay. You can you can check his final or postal order. Yeah, I've shown you you can breathe higher than Mount Everest. No, you cannot. Why well, said what I said was if you'd listen, which you don't listen, I said you cannot breathe normally at the higher altitudes and you, you said, Oh yes you can, you said. You said Do you want to bet five hundred quid? So I bet you five hundred quid. So you therefore you are wrong. You cannot breathe normally you didn't say that at, at, at the top of Everest or higher than Everest. You just you can't. cannot survive without an oxygen mass above Everest. That's not what I said. That's exactly what you said. No, it's not. Give me five hundred pounds. <laughs> Listen, when 80, 80 people die and only 20 people survive that's a pretty good evidence that most people cannot survive because yeah, yeah, they, they didn't die just because you find you one person that survived does not not doesn't... one person Hannah it's more than one person and the people that died did not die because of lack of oxygen oh god you're oh, flapping yeah, now yeah, Timo. you're flapping did, did. Hannah, they did not die because of lack of oxygen. Let's Are you report. trying to tell me that at 40,000 feet, there's plenty of uh, available O2 for the average person to live? Plenty of air up there for anyone to breathe. Bullshit! You are fucking utterly wrong! And we've got the so evidence. Wrong. It's it's really wrong. We've got the evidence to back... I had to do deep research like, to find that, because when you guys... Go, I'll go back to perfectly... When you guys what, were saying, oh, we get thin and thin, thin, I'm thinking, well, I'm sure that's not true. They did it's a bit of research, true. found out that 40,000 feet, 35,000 feet, 39,000 feet, people can breathe, survive for hours in that region. Why do they pressurize planes without, without and have oxygen? oxygen? They don't oxygen pressurize. It's available myth, in case of depressurizing. It's a myth. No one pressurizes the plane. Oh, they don't they pressurize. Really do you want to say there's a There's good pressure up there. Uh, you know, you're just here to, sort, to create. Gibberish. Chaos. Well, you can say whatever you like. At the end of the day, can't demonstrate any of these things. These are just yes, you can of... demonstrate. Talk to the people that have climbed Mount Everest. Go and speak to them. Yeah, like Vim Hoffman. What the yeah. fuck are you talking about? It's like witnesses. Hoffman, yeah. done it. Spoke... I'm like, Vim Hoffman you... didn't go to the top of Mount Everest. Well, how have you... Apparently exactly. you have never been on a airplane either? Climbed to the top of Mount Everest. No, you fucking haven't. Ear, my ears get all messed up when I'm in a plane, which is clear that's evidence that they pressurize it. That's because you're out of health. I'm quadrilling more in my life. No. Pressure differences. Yeah, that's because you're in a container. Flown, so they lower the temperature. That lowers the pressure in the container. The temperature is 72 degrees on average. Yeah, in a plane? Like, are you... In the plane? Can I go back to my other question as well? How does a standard altimeter work on an airplane? In the container, uh, Phil, these things will happen. So if they do pressurize the plane, which I doubt they do anyway, we'll feel the difference have because... To. In, well, if they do, again, you it's because you're in the 300 plane. 300 dead pills. You're in the container, and they're controlling the pressure and the temperature. Because they don't want to have a 40% death rate, or, no, sorry, 60, 70% and death rate. It's 79%. If they pressurize the airplanes, the temperature would increase in that container, which it doesn't happen. So therefore nope. We know they no, that's not nope. true, Kimo. What's the temperature outside the aircraft at cruising altitude, Outside, Kimo? there's no container, so it doesn't, it's not the same. What temperature is outside the aircraft at cruising Again, altitude, it's irrelevant Kimo? because there's no container. It's very relevant. What Can't temperature is outside, outside the aircraft at cruising altitude? It doesn't matter what you tell me what make the point. Okay. You can't answer the question. So I don't know. You tell me make the point because it's irrelevant. Because inside the container, no, it's very relevant. You get no, pressure and temperature. You should, you should follow this line of questioning. It is very relevant. Exactly. Not very relevant. relevant. You irrelevant. just said the temperature would increase if it was pressurized. I mean, we can demonstrate that it certainly is higher. It's not for that reason, but it definitely is How higher. How do the pressures increase inside the plane? The, what, the, are you back to denying that weather balloons exist? You see, you just dance around the question, dance around the points. You know you can't demonstrate that planes are pressurized. Yeah, sealed. we've no, measured no. the pressure at that years, altitude. You're really the good altitude at tap dancing. that planes <laughs> fly at, the, temp the pressure Producers, is... How are you going to make the master inside the airplane? airplane? Hmm? Hmm? Okay.
Kim, I mean, you asked that question like in the to, middle of me uh, talking, so no, how I, I would also like you to. Uh, I still would like you to answer my question as no, how does I want Doofus to explain how to how how work they're going to measure an the pressure inside an airplane. Well, if it's how does uh, how does a standard altimeter work in an airplane, Kim? Go on, uh, Doofus, explain. You owe me five hundred yeah. pound, Matt. No, no, you answer my question. No, I don't. No. Uh, answer my question. How does a standard no, I'm, not, I'm not making any more discussions with a voucher, yeah. right? You've stolen my money. Okay, you owe me five hundred pounds. How does an altimeter work on a standard on a, on a yeah. standard right, I'm make a quick cup of tea now. Now. And you think about how you're going to pay me that five hundred. No. Chemo, chemo, come on, answer the question. How does a standard altimeter work on an airplane? You don't know. A standard altimeter? Yeah, how does it work? Uh, by gauging the pressure? How does it gauge the pressure, exactly? How, what's the mechanism it uses? I don't know. I thought it would be something like this, this a is, this is, this is, this is given. This is giving chemo a bit of time to Google it now. This is, this is what he's doing right now. He's Googling it. There's no other way it works in pressure. There's no other way it works. There's no other way you could detect it as standard out of meter. And the way it works is there's a bellow inside the inside the container of the, of of, uh, of the of the out of meter. When the pressure lowers, the bellows shrink, contract. Okay, so it's calibrated to actually to along those lines of that those bellows how far it shrinks. That gives the that gives the altitude. That's how it works. So it cannot work any other way than air pressure as it decreases with altitude. So then that gives you, you know, the altitude gonna... reading. Chemo's, chemo's MO is to take the bit of information and twist it and turn it until he can find something yeah. to he hasn't, been, he, hasn't, he hasn't been here to answer my question, so he doesn't know. Does, does the bellow shrink or increase? Like, expand? So there's no other way that an altimeter can detect, yeah, to detect altitude, a standard altimeter. He can't. There's no other way. I thought you said something about a bellow. Um, uh, Phil and I, um, and I uh, myself actually, are wondering: does it um, expand or contract like a balloon? Wait, because bellow sounds like balloon. I did. Did I mention a balloon? I said bellows. I didn't say anything about what a bellow. Bellow is like a bag that's filled with air that you blow out like a chimney bellows, isn't it? Well, probably something similar. Yeah. So how is that? How is that going to change? How is the How is the pressure that going to change? It would press against the balloon, essentially the bellows. As it goes, at, so if it goes in altitude, right, it's going to it's going to constrict, right? Yeah, it's gonna. Uh, oh, actually, no. If it goes to lower pressure, pressure, it normally expands, doesn't it? Yeah, like but so how 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 else is the altimeter going to read the read the altitude? Explain it to me. I don't know, based on what the percentage is. What was that, Phil? You don't know. But, the, but still, you can assist that there's no, pr there's no pressure gradient. Ridiculous. No, I think Lennon and I both agree Ridiculous. that there's a pressure gradient. Um, I think we're just confused as to how it works. Well, Chemo doesn't. He certainly doesn't think there's a... He thinks it's the same pressure wherever altitude you go at, which is absolute gibberish, which I've just proved made him look like an idiot again. They think oh, I mean, there's the same amount of oxygen available at all altitudes too which is hogwash well i mean based off of what uh has been presented by moyak and what you guys have said verbally i'm already getting a picture of you going higher and the thing expands like a balloon and as you go lower you get more pressure and it pushes out the air and the bellows that's what i'm thinking it doesn't yeah no, it, I mean, doesn't, the, it, doesn't, I it doesn't measure it doesn't measure anything to do with the air coming in or out it's not that it's measuring the actual mechanics of the uh, the bellows actually moving, so that's the mechanics of it. Yeah, but they uh, they so depending on how them. far it actually moves will give you your altitude. But it expands, right? Because it's initially at atmosphere pressure at sea level or whatever the level is, and then as you go up in elevation. The pressure yeah, yeah, around the I mean, bellow decreases, yeah, yeah. and so it should expand. Yeah. Okay, just so want to make sure I got the principle right. Yeah, yeah. So, when you, so when you're at so when you're when you're an air uh, an airfield, right? So you calibrate your your altimeter because you know airfields are at different uh, altitudes. Right, to, which, the, you know, to the altitude you're at. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it, it calibrates it to that. So therefore, as you go up, as you go further up, it's, the, the bellows are going to shrink. 
You could also use an absolute pressure one, right? But I don't know if they use them on planes. Just compare it to yeah, a reference. Barometer. Yeah. Well, as a, um, you know, flat-hearted, flat-earther, I would just say we have a pressure gradient under a contained firmamental dome system where we have air cont uh, being contained by the firmament dome. It's pressing against said dome. We're getting layers. Oh. Well, that's, that's fine. You can, argue, you can argue that with domes or whatever, or whatever but you, you're going to need to tell that to chemo. Chemo thinks it's the same pressure no matter what attitude you go at, which is hogwash, because otherwise how are our aircraft going to operate? Lemon, if you have something that well, is they pressing. certainly wouldn't bother putting an oxygen mask in the place that uh, has plenty of oxygen in it. To depressurize. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Lemon, it's it's silly. I mean, it's just question. common knowledge. You don't even have to be pretty smart to understand it. Well, no. I mean, there are particular brands of flat earthers that will have to disagree with common knowledge in order to try and make a flat earth work. Oh, yeah. somebody was trying to ask so something. Game, um, yeah. So sorry. Um, yes, I think it was me. Uh -huh. If you have something that is continue, continuing pressuring on the closed system, that's isolated system, in fact, you, the pressure is going gonna, is gonna to be balanced in all the directions and it's going to be similar in all the directions. So you cannot have a dome if you have a gradual pressure. I would have to uh, disagree there and split from, I guess, um, other people who might say something otherwise. They, uh, on one hand, they'd say that it'd be equal. I'd say that eventually things will settle. And I think the thing that settles things into their perspective, proper layers, is charge separation based off of electromagnetism, where you have an electrical gradient as well going up and down from ground to dome. And things are like, oh, this is my layer. I'm going to go here. You go to your layer. I'll go to my layer. And everything levels out by electromagnetic charge separation cutting the slices up and down from the firmament down to the ground and up again so i think things will expand outward initially um you know like gas will expand outward it will eventually lose energy and the thing that takes over is electromagnetic charge separation saying you go to your layer i'll go to my layer so here we go guys he doesn't believe in gradual uh, pressure you have electromagnetic. Yeah, that's separating things into layers from the top to the bottom. It's like me shooting a ball up into the air. It'll That energy will send the ball into the air for a while. Eventually, that energy will dissipate, and electromagnetism will take over and say, okay, it's time for you to come back to your layer now. Well, that would be a, I, I like that idea, Lemon, but um, have you seen any experiments that show that you can reverse the effects of gravity by doing the same method? In other words... Can I get a reverse gradient inside of that, uh, inside of a tube with, uh, with air in it? There was and a, so what, what potential difference does it require to do that? There was um, a news release that I read saying that they reverse gravity with some sort of electromagnetic uh, shift where um, the gas uh, um, originally was going to the bottom of the layer. They reverse the charge on a small scale in an experiment, and all of a sudden the gas is going to the top by electro. Right. Electricity. What potential difference I, I read it. was that? I didn't read the specifics. I'm just like, oh, this is possible, but um, I should have gotten the paper. Yeah, you, you got in order to see if that could be something that's practical in the world. You'd have to kind of figure that out. Like, you know, I'm I'm guessing that you had like thousands of volts, uh, uh, going through there to try and achieve that ionization types of things going on, and uh, then you would expect the air to be ionized. Yeah, way more than a thousand volts per meter. And that's direct voltage, but I think that you can get uh, powerful voltage with very subtle effects without a whole lot of power by sound and frequency. What, what kind of voltage us. are we talking about? Voltage, as far as I know, um, really, uh, you've got static, which is really just electricity, but how it's stored is different. Um, what, what kind of voltage are you talking about? I'd have to go and uh, drudge up the article. I probably could find it if I do a little bit of Google foo. But I think that we can have these powerful effects with uh, very unnoticeable levels of very subtle power, even though we're not measuring it by induction. Induction? Yeah, induction. Have you ever seen an induction furnace used to heat up air? Mm, uh, no, never seen it. It seems to heat up ferrous metals really nice and stuff like that. But oh, Induction yeah. creates magnetic fields, not electric yeah, fields. 
Interesting. I don't think that, that changes uh, a lot of temperature. And that's one of the beauties of induction is it doesn't uh, create a lot of residual heat except for what it induces in something. Hence, well, induction. Well, forgive me if I'm using a technical term in a, a different way or a wrong way, but I'm talking about the principle of induction where you make the thing do its own thing without having to push or pull it directly. It's like that hackneyed example, like I said before, I could push and pull you across the room or I could shoot you as a, a baleful stare of hate and you inductively choose to just hightail it and run away without me necessarily having to pull or push you with a whole lot of force. That's the principle of induction I'm talking about, magnetically, electrically, or whatever, where you can have great power and great results without necessarily a whole lot of push or pull directly put into this electrical thing or whatever. Well, electricity doesn't seem to have the properties you're describing, but as you were. So everything is by direct um, contact and push and pull. I find that hard to believe since sound and frequency are things that can organize salt on a cymatic plate and induce it to take a certain confirmation without having to push or pull all of the salt grains into one uh, formation. I find the that very hard. Plate, isn't the cymatic plate just a uh, piece of steel that's vibrating at a resonant frequency so that it actually tends to have little waveforms form in it? And then the salt bounces yeah. to a given location. It doesn't sound like uh, anything special. I mean, I changed the size of that plate, and that salt takes a different pattern. It's not some kind of an inherent property of uh, of the salt in relationship to it. Oh, well, salt is, going the salt is definitely being pushed. Pushed, it bounces. It, it's a vibrated and find it seeks its. It doesn't seek. In the random bouncing, it ends up in those locations and clears the spots where the amplitude is the highest. And so yeah. that's the well, I'm it goes to about. the nulls. I'm talking about induction, where you don't have to push a whole lot of power in there. It just gets into formation, and the power just naturally flows into the system. Well, there's a shitload of power involved in that. With um, the cymatic sound plate? I don't know about that. Well... You're I vibrating steel. High frequency, yeah. You're vibrating steel enough to actually impart uh, kinetic energy into an object. You're, you're vibrating that steel plate with a shitload of sound. Hmm. Interesting. But you can get action at a distance using electric and magnetic fields, yeah, for sure. But it's not free. That would be the one that I would go with since we can have some nice action at a distance and induction where you ain't got to push in a whole lot of power necessarily. You make things scalable. end up formation and the power just kind of flows in. But that's scalable. And as you scale it, it gets much different properties. Like you'd have to have billions and billions and billions of volts of potential difference. And then uniform potential difference, like through all materials. Hmm. Like paper... Uh, versus steel. You know, they have very different electrical and uh, uh, magnetic properties. Hmm. Interesting. And that system doesn't have to be discharged because if it's going to be dis discharged, it's going to lose all the energy. So it's not possible then. I think if we go away from pushing or pulling power in directly to a much more subtle, um, indirect way of just induction getting into formation and energy flowing in from, say, the ether, we can get a lot more stuff than we normally would by mathematic calculation. Hey, it's cool how, that you were... How about, how about let's not say the ether until we prove it exists? Like, how about nope. let's just not say that? We can use retroductive logic to say, hmm, nothing cannot exist, therefore there must okay. be something here, and reason back to space being an ether, since it cannot be nothing. So that's all the proof that I need. Well, you haven't proven it can't be nothing. How do you prove that it's nothing? There's nothing there to prove. You would just have to accept it as an axiomatic statement no, with no proof available be. if there's nothing there. You made a positive claim. You said it cannot be nothing. By logic. Uh, and your logic has no um, logical reason for existing. So yeah. how do you prove that nothing is there when there's nothing to prove for there to be there? 
how do you do that logically? I don't know how you prove that, but your assertion is that it that nothing can't exist. That I hate that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't. I don't be... know that. I don't know that nothing ever has existed. Reality so doesn't have space to be something. Oh my goodness! Reality doesn't. Uh, have I would to say be... yes. Oh my goodness! Reality doesn't have to be intuitive. Just so you know. It does if you want to guide actions to find out whether reality is what you say it is or not. Non-Newtonian fluids, for example, are not intuitive. If there's not enough intuition, at least for us to have clear actions that are definable that we can take to figure out whether something is true or not, we have nothing more than mysticism. You're telling me that water is a liquid. Okay, I should be able to take definable actions to see if it's a liquid, like touching it, feeling it splash across my hands, looking at it, seeing it flow, seeing it mix with something else, see it not take shape unless it, you know, conforms to a container. I need to be able to take intuitive, natural, knowable actions to see whether or not this is true. If I cannot, then it is little more than mysticism. Well, your need for something to be intuitive is not a requirement for reality to be the way that it is, right? So like, not we... everything requires intuition. So how do we check these smart people for bullshit? They can say any level of quantum mystery quackery, and we won't have an intuitive model to check them with common sense. Well, well you, you have, have to go you... and study and understand what the actual reasoning being used is, even if it's counterintuitive. Yeah, plus, they also, plus there's also models that we can use and test. I mean, that's, that's kind of built into the whole scientific thing. I, I, I mean, you're basically saying, hey, how do we outsmart the smart people without being smart ourselves? Like, that's stupid. Well, they're trying to outsmart us by learn. Not us access to our intuitive common Go sense. Go learn. Read. Common sense is not study. very common. And even the Bible says that God uses the ways of the fool to confound the wise. Not that it's about confounding or confusing or getting one up on somebody. But well, we somebody, somebody certainly science. wrote that down once. Yeah. That's about all we know about that. Somebody certainly wrote that down once. It seems somebody to be the wise also trying to take the wise and fool them. What was that about the wise, uh, Mr. Meyer? Well, if, I'm, if I hear what you say there, they use fools to confound the wise. Um, it's so ironic, that's right? your mantra. You're trying to fool the wise, the smarter people. You're betters. Using the yeah, ways of the fool to confound the wise to show that he is the Lord. That's something else. It, it's, well, it's interesting it's, that Lemon Bird's bringing that up because it was the religious elite Jews that wrote. The only the scholar Jews who knew and, and would translate the scrolls and keep the scrolls. It wasn't the commoner. It wasn't the fool. What were you saying, Hannah? Oh, oh I can't remember. I mean, in part, this oh. is because access to education has always, or at least largely been, even today to, to an extent, a rather, there's a rather class-based divide in quality of education. <clears throat> so it was, it's, you know, historically, the, the access to the best education is reserved mostly for the wealthy or someone in some sort of a power class. And that's still somewhat true today. <clears throat> Although with specialization, the situation has changed slightly. But as a result, there's always been a bit of a <clears throat> con conflict, right? classic have-have-not situation. I only say that because, you know, we may be getting a bunch of gobbledygook when a nice, intuitive, common-sense truth model might help us, you know, unravel some of this stuff. We don't need billions okay. of dollars. Okay, so, so, so we let me... We need common let's sense. Say, oh. okay, okay, so let's say something comes along. Let's say the smart people try to make as many things as common sense as possible for your benefit. You want it to be common sense as well. And then something comes along and it just isn't. And the smart people look at it and go, well, 
we've proven that it's this way. We're as sure as we can be that it is, but on first glance, you just wouldn't expect that. You know, like, you have a case of the sort of, like, um, when the internet busted apart disagreeing about that that dress. Right? Where some people said it was black and gold, and some people said it was blue and white, or whatever. <clears throat> Where you just have a situation that's counterintuitive. It's not going to make sense to a large group of people. All right? What do you say to them then? You can't just make something intuitive that isn't. That doesn't mean it's untrue. It had to be common sense enough for them to explore it. So they just talk about the common sense ways that they use to go about their exploration. Stuff like, I looked at a ripple in a pond, then I saw this diffraction pattern of light that looked like a drop in a pond, and I, you know, intuited quite naturally that light is a waving undulation in an etheric <clears throat> pond. And what, what, if, what if understanding, what if understanding their explorations description requires you to learn new things, right? If they're, if they're describing their exploration and they're using math or they're using certain physics or calculations to do that exploration, right? To, to equate things or to prove things or show whatever test theories, whatever the process is for that person. If you don't understand that process, then you're just immediately going to say that it's unintuitive. But, but to somebody some, who does, they would think it's perfectly intuitive. There is some sort of common sense way that allowed them to take simple, intelligible action. Whatever it is, that's what we need to hear about. Because people take knowable, common sense action most of the time because of very simple, easy to understand, intuitive, you know, directions or whatever that's all we need to hear about that's uh what we get with the ether since you know um nothing cannot exist that's counterintuitive that destroys the mind and even if it were true you wouldn't be able to prove it it's self-annihilating because if there was nothing there you wouldn't be able to prove that it's nothing because there would be nothing there to prove what it is 